Welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Travis and it's a pleasure to be your guide for a short uh, restorative kind of earthy practice. Um, it's actually later in the evening here uh, when I filmed this practice, this class, and we'd had a very warm day today, very, very hot, and then a big summer storm blew in and it's caused all of the, the change and I felt like, yeah, just doing something for before bed. So this practice doesn't have to be on a warm day, it doesn't have to be uh, after a storm, but it might feel nice um, doing it before you go to bed. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and uh, let me know how you go. In terms of props, uh, it's not a bad idea to have um, bolsters or big pillows. Uh, some blocks placed around in case you want to use them. I will be facing you with my head towards you so you can see me in plain view. So I apologise if you don't get to see much of me, it's more that I'd like you to explore this without really having to look at the camera, but when you do, you can see me in the orientation that the practice suggests. And finally, occasionally in this, this particular class, there's a lot of left and rights. I'll do my best to explain it slowly, but just be aware of that as we go along. Uh, anyway, let's begin. We'll lie down on our back. <clears throat> and because this will be the beginning of this restorative practice, it might feel nice to prop the head up with your block. So I like to use the block at an angle. And you're looking for this ridge we know as the occipital it's where the skull ends and the neck begins. It's quite sensitive and juicy with a lot of energy that flows from the brain through the nervous system, the spine. But for me, as soon as I do this, I like to rock the head from side to side. So I hope that's how you feel. And just be reminded, if you don't have a block, it's totally okay. You can just have your head resting on the mat. And I'll pass the baton over to you in some respects. I'll let you do whatever you want with your legs and your arms. There's no right or wrong. Just let yourself settle in. And my encouragement will be close down your eyes if that's cool with you. And tune in to the melody of your breath and let it be a beautiful symphony. A symphony composed by you. It doesn't need a score that is difficult, strenuous, or restrictive. Let it all be really natural. Each breath is a gift, a gift of the present, and the present is this moment. Don't second guess yourself in this practice, in this class. There will be moments when I will be quiet too. Avoid looking up, seeing what's going on. Trust in the process. Let the class unfold. It's high summer here in Barrow in the Southern Islands of New South Wales. And my mum's house has the most beautiful magnolia bushes that are all flowering at the same time. Magnolias are quite magnificent. Not only do they have a beautiful fragrance, but they have this tendency of being very quick in unfolding, in flowering, and then beginning the process of destruction. And the beginning and the end for a magnolia flower is 24 hours. Just a day. They don't flower in competition with each other, in comparison. So allow yourself 
that analogy to unfold. Don't compare. Don't analyze. Just be. Whether you've taken the block behind the back of your head or you've had other modifications and options, let's remove all of the props now and lie down so that our entire body is supported by our mat underneath us. And let the skeleton drop down into the tissues of your body. And then draw your knees in towards you. Give yourself a lovely big cuddle and squeeze and get creative. Moving away with this lovely around the back, down into the pelvis, the sacrum, up and along the spine. And then let go of the left leg and let the sole of the left foot come to the mat. And draw the right knee in and give it a lovely big squeeze. Take your right arm inside your right leg for half happy baby. So reach for the pinky toe edge of the foot. If you can't do that, then hold the ankle or the shin. Find something that works. You could even use a towel over the right foot. So half happy baby here, encouragement. I like to let the right knee drift out wider, giving myself a little more space in my hip joint. The left leg was bent, sole of the foot on the mat, but if that doesn't feel uh, natural, if you'd like to lengthen the left leg out along your mat, add some intensity, you can do that. And why I encourage this practice to be done at night is, could be an observation to those sticky frontal hip joints where there's all of that tissue that gets really tight. So with my left piece fingers, I'm rubbing into that area of the front of my left thigh. You can feel the bony protrudence, the frontal hip joint, hip um, bone. And then you can sort of encourage the fingers to move in the direction of the tissues down towards the knee. Really find this space where you can get a lot of massage into that part of your body. And in the process, you might not have noticed that the, the right leg's been there and it's been getting that stretch and the half happy baby is, is happening. And we're just staying for a little while longer. Now let go of the right foot and let the right foot lower to the mat, right knee points to the ceiling. Figure four stretch with the left leg lifting up and crossing over the top of the right thigh near the knee. So you may need to have a look, but it's the left leg on top of the right, figure four. Before we do anything, let's just let all that settle down into the field of gravity. Cactus your arms, make a big W shape, palms face the ceiling, back of the head on the mat. Feel free now to stay in if this is enough stretch, or would you like to add on, maybe you reach for the back of your right thigh with your hands, or perhaps your flexibility allows you to lift up your upper body and find more of the front of the right shin, maybe interlacing your fingers around the front of the right shin. And if you lifted your head in the process, please return the back of the head to the mat. Elongate the neck so the breath is free to come and go uninterrupted. Allow now for the next few moments some beautiful deep breaths. Your 
awareness settle on the area that you feel the deepest sensation. And use the melody of your breath as a calming mechanism. You enter into the field of gravity. Let yourself feel heavy along the back body. Let go of the right leg, but maintain the shape of your legs. So continue to find figure four. Simply let the right foot return to the mat and the left foot stay over the right thigh. Now feel free to let the tipping pigeon unfold without this option or take your right hand up to your left ankle, that's the one crossed over your thigh, and as you tip the pigeon to the right, maintain the hold of the ankle. And I just have to get my microphone pack out of the way. So you've tipped your legs to the right, holding the right hand around the left ankle. And now the left arm's free, perhaps it wants to drape out to the left, and the head might roll in that direction too. Some of you might feel this target area around the outer left hip. Some of these stout muscles that can stabilize the hip here, getting a beautiful stretch. For others, it might be in a groin. Over the next few moments, just pause and breathe. back into your figure four shape. So let the legs return as they were before. And now cross the left leg over the right as though you're crossing it as if it was under a table. So it's the same leg over the top of the right, giving ourselves a chance to move the knees towards our chest, holding onto the knees. Perhaps you reach up for the ankles and let the legs open out wider, the ankles open out wider apart from each other or perhaps you take your hands to the soles of your feet and reach for the pinky toe edges of your feet. The intensity of this stretch now is what begins the mind game. Noticing how you react in these challenging moments. Remembering you're worth it. Would you like to back off a little or would you like to continue the intensity and the sensation? Final five. Four. Bug, uncross everything, reach the legs, reach the arms up into the ceiling, and just flail about. Recline bound angle pose, soles of feet touch, one hand heart, one hand tummy.
close your knees like a book, draw the knees in towards you, roll around the back. In fact, if you can remember, go in the opposite direction. And maybe you don't need to remember, just do what feels unnatural. It's so around and about an odd way. Let's set it all up on the other side. So let go of the right leg, right foot on the mat, hug the left knee and give it a big squeeze and cuddle. Half happy baby. Left arm inside left leg, pinky toe edge of the foot. Noticing here whether you want to hold the ankle, whether you want a towel over the foot, maybe holding it with your hand, left hand. Remember, you can feel free to slide the right leg down the mat away from you. Slowly let go of the left foot and lower the left foot onto the mat, bend the knee. Sweep the right leg up to the sky and then cross the ankle over your left thigh. Cactus your arms, palms face the ceiling. I like to cactus the arm to get your hands out of the way so you can let your body do the rest. So get the legs into position. I know from teaching this in public classes that lefts and rights are confusing for some people and that's okay. So if you are on the same side again, I encourage you to switch it up and do your best to follow along because I will continue to guide the side that I am on. But if you need to switch it, switch it up. Both hands reach through for the back of the left thigh or for the left shin. You draw it in towards you to the point at which you start to find some curiosity. Something that sparks your interest. Is it similar to the other side or are you feeling this in a totally different spot? A deeper layer, more warmer sensation. Our bodies are very asymmetrical, so it's okay for this to be in another part of your thigh or your hip or your buttock. And just remember that this practice is its symmetrical sense of doing one side followed by the other. It's a lovely way to balance and harmonize, to yoke and unite, to come together. More yoga, better world. Let go of the legs, but maintain the shape. We're heading to tipping pigeon, so the feet will go to the, the, the right foot, will go to the left, but if you'd like to reach the left hand up for the right ankle, back can feel super nice. This side will feel nicer for me because I don't have that battery pack on my hip. Right hand is out to the right, might roll the head in the direction that serves it.
Just let the breath come and go. Shallow, short, long or steady. Let it be a gift of this present moment and accept it willingly, thoughtfully and kindly. As your figure four shape returns to centre, allow the right leg to slide over the left. Hug the knees in and hold them first. Slide the legs down, hold the ankles. Reach for the pinky toe edges of the feet and find your reclined shoelace, your variations, your options. The abdominal muscles for me and the frontal creases of my hips are where I suddenly gather all of this tension. And it takes some acute awareness to soften that part of your body. And if you're like me and those sensations are profound, perhaps you can work now for these next few moments on softening and easing. For five. Four. Three. Lengthen the legs and the arms to the ceiling and flail about. Choices now, I'm going to spin around so you can see my body in action. If you have a block, you could take a supported bridge. Medium height block, lift the hips, place it underneath the sacred, fat, flat, bony part of the base of your spine. Option two, take it to the lowest height and place it closer towards the buttocks and lift up into the Buriti Karani with the legs to the sky. Or if you're fortunate enough, like I am, to have a wall nice and close, then maneuver your way there now and take your hip to the side and then slide the legs up. Cactus your arms and wherever you are, whatever you've chosen, this is it. We'll be here for about four minutes. So, before you get super, super comfortable, the other option would be to lie down in Shamasana.
very, very welcome to stay here for as long as you wish. Well, perhaps you might just roll over and dive into bed and have a beautiful night's sleep. But it's been a pleasure to guide you this afternoon in my little humble studio. And I hope that you've had a pleasant time. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.